Life New Church. This is Pastor Kogwan. It's a joy to be here to share with God's Word again. Today we're going to look at this book, James, chapter 4, verse 13 to chapter 5, verse 6. And we're going to talk about warnings for those who are proud and those who are rich. You may be wondering, I'm not rich and I'm not proud. But I'm sure there's something that the Lord has for us this morning that we can learn from the book of James. So with that, let's proceed by asking God to speak to us. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for loving us. Even now as we come and look into your word, open our eyes to behold wonderful truths of your word. Now as your servant, dear leader, by you speak for your words, the main way the words that come out from our mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. And we pray this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Now the book of James is about faith revealed true works. Faith revealed true works. And the key verse, I believe, is found in James chapter 1, verse 22. It reads, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. The topic for today is faith at works is revealed when we take heed of the warnings of pride and wealth. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this and that. And it is you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the misery that are coming upon you. Your riches have wrought, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver has corroded, and the corrosions will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid out treasures in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers mourn your fields, which you kept back by flock, are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the years of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fed in your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. The passage begins with, Come now. In other words, pay attention. You refers to those who are wealthy. They left their town or city to go and do business. And many of them, you know, in the ancient days, will move from city to city, town to town, carrying goods on the back of the camels. They will talk about deals and boast about their plans. Like this is what we're going to do tomorrow. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. And then they will spend time there making profit. And these are the cities and towns where they will go and trade. And they will say, today and tomorrow we will do this, we will do that. The problems lies not in what they know, but what they do not know. Not their capabilities, but in overestimate of their abilities and underestimate of their limits. Not with their planning, but planning without consulting God. They say we will rather than maybe because the truth is they think that everything is within their control and within their means. The truth is James reminded them what is your life? You are like a mist only here for a little while and you'll be gone. This is a figure of speech used to tell them that life is short. Well, for some of you, you know, or most of you, you're very young, but time passes very fast. It will be pure arrogance to say that we still have a lot of time left. We don't. We need to remember who we are. We are just missed. Don't forget also that we don't know everything. No one will say, I know everything, you know. 
but sometimes we live as though as we really know everything. We think that we know everything because we forget who we are. We need to begin by asking ourselves who God is. We are not in control. God is in full control. We don't know everything, but God knows everything. Of course, we should plan three years, five years, ten years, but who knows what is going to happen tomorrow. One week ago, you know, we were still planning, you know, to go back to school. But this week, we can't. We can't. Don't forget who we are. Don't forget who we are. Don't be proud. James then reminds us that this is what we should say instead. If the Lord wills, we will do this, we will do that. A contrast of what they often say than what they ought to say. It is not about using the right words, but something more. If the Lord is willing. In other words, putting God in the equation of our plans. Don't be like the devil who say, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Rather, learn from Paul who say, if God wills, if the Lord wills, if the Lord permits. The difference is one who is proud, the other one who is humble. My brothers and sisters, also be careful of the extreme. Don't say I will. And also don't say, if God wills, and use that as an excuse. Are you coming for cell group? If the Lord wills. Are you coming for church? If the Lord's will. Are you going to school? If the Lord wills. As though as we have no choice. No, it is a statement of delight saying, if the Lord wills, I will love to do the will of God. No out of pride. Because the truth is this. The issue lies not in the words we use, but our hearts. In other words, the root issue is pride. The word arrogance has the idea of someone who offers cures or medicine that brings no cure at all. In other words, I can cure COVID, but what I say is not true. What may sound helpful or godly, but is evil in the sight of God. James then concludes, that the right thing to do is to do what is right. If not, it is sin. How do we know what is the right thing to do? It reads, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. James chapter 1 verse 22. You know, the right thing to do is to do what the word of God says. God's going to hold us accountable of what we know. In other words, you know, it is not good enough to know. We need to do what it says and God will be there to guide us and help us to do so. One of my favorite hymns uh, goes something like, I don't know about tomorrow but I know who holds my hands. I don't know when this COVID will end but I know that God holds my hands. I don't know what it will be like for your N level, O level, A level but I know God is there for you. He wants to hold your hands and guide you through. I don't know what it will be like for you after you graduate or go to army, you know, but I know that God is there for you. He wants to hold your hand. Do you know that? Do you know that? Do what it says and the Lord is there to guide you through. After talking about pride, James continued by saying, Come now. A, eh? come now. In other words, pay attention. Pay attention. Still talking to the same group of people, you who are rich. But there is a different warning. He says that the problem is not with those who are rich, but ungodly rich. You may say that I'm not rich. You know, wealth in this context is defined not by what you have, but what you do with what you have. And God is the one who gives us wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. It is not a sin to be rich, but the problem is how we use it. How we use it. And James continued to say that, you know, there's something that's inside we need to be very careful of, beside pride, and that is greed. He used these two words, weep and how. Weep and how. The word weep has the idea of 
to cry quietly in tears, something like, <laughs> or to howl. <laughs> They have to do both. Why? Because their riches will rot. The garments will be moth eaten and the gold and silver will be corrupt. You see, there are three types of riches that the wealthy have. First, grains, but yet food will rot. Garments, moth will eat them. Gold, even gold will corrupt. How could that be possible? James was trying to say that nothing is for forever. Nothing is for sure. Even gold will one day lose its value. You see, the reality is all this became evidence or witnesses against these people who are rich. Now you may say, I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money in my wallet or even in my bank. But the truth is, we all have riches that we hold on to. It could be our studies, our relationship, our trophies, our achievements. And if we place you know, our value system in all this, we're in trouble. The truth is, often than not, we lay up treasures in the last days. Where do you place your treasure? Treasure is a value word. It depends on what we value in life. Is it the things of God or the things of this world? Please study hard. Please save up. But we must ask ourselves, is it just for ourselves or to bless others or for the extension of God's kingdom? This French singer once said that, if God has allowed me to earn so much money, 20 million, it is because he knows I'll give it all away. John Wesley put it this way, earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Now I'm not asking you to find everything that you have at home and then after give away. This is not the point, your parents will come to me. But the truth is, don't put your security, your significance, your identity in all this thing. It is not good for our soul. Use it as the Lord leads you, as the Lord leads you. The truth is, when our hearts are not right, and our eyes are on the things of this world, we may no longer want to do what God says in His Word. James gave us a picture of what was really happening then. The workers were working very hard. The family members were waiting for them to bring back the food. While they were working and waiting at the back of the scene, the rich were also working very hard to see how they can take from them. The wages of the laborers were kept back. Not that the rich forgot, but intentionally, the rich held back their pay. To God, they're stealing. They hire promised that after the job was done, they will be paid. But the rich robbed them and put traps to make the poor fell into it. And at the end of the day, if the poor complain, they will bring the poor to the court. The rich will pay the bride. They will win. And at the end of the day, they just store more wealth for themselves. They boast about it. See, this is what I've done. Ha, huh, now I'm richer. I'm wealthier. The rule is this. The golden rule is whoever has the gold make the rules. Now back then, imagine with me. At home, the workers got nothing. The children are crying. The babies are hungry. And the poor had to give out their food for their kids. What else can they do? Oh, they can cry out to God. The truth is, they cry out to God that the cries of the laborers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. Why the Lord of hosts? The truth is, the Lord of hosts has the idea of the Lord of armies, describing that God is like a warrior, the commander-in-chief of the heavenly armies, and God was about to declare war against the wealth. To declare war for those who could not resist the rich. Take a look at, let's take a look at some of this translation. He does not resist you, was not opposing you, who could not even fight back. But God will fight for them. 
The poor could not do much, but the Lord of hosts would do something. And in God's cause, no bribe, and God knows it all. And this is the verdict. You may think that everything is fine, but God is going to judge the rich. Is it so? Let's take a look. You see, the truth is this. Ten years after this letter was written, Jerusalem fell to the Romans. All the wealth were taken away. Their grains, their garments, their gold were gone. For some, even their lives. God has already won them. But did they take it? Not really. The truth is this. Faith and works is revealed only when we take heed of the warnings from God. Does that mean that God does not love those who are proud and those who are rich? Of course not. The truth is God reaches out to them. In the New Testament, Jesus reached out to Zacchaeus, a rich tax collector, the rich young man, even Matthew, the tax collector. God loves them all. Jesus loved them. Jesus wants them to just be like Him, humble and always looking out for the poor, for the poor. So then let me close with a story. Many years ago, Winnie and I decided to get a domestic helper, but new to us, so we asked some people for advice. I still remember asking this friend. He was telling me, you know, um, get them to eat, making me rice, or bread at home before you bring them out. So when you bring your family to Ding Tai Fung, you know, Swenson, you know, she'll be too full. And then you can save some money. I look at him like, what? And he continued to say, buy them not so good shampoo, soap. And then if she say not so good, you can ask her to buy her own and then you can save some more money. I didn't take his advice, you know, he's not a believer. But the Lord bless him, you know, and um, but of course there are also good advices that we got from others. So we got this uh, domestic helper. We call her by name. We treat her as like our younger sister. And we ask her, is there anything else we can do for you? She said she wants to learn English because she has a son and uh, when she returns she hoped to teach him English. Just nice, meaning he's an English teacher, you know, so, and that's what we did. He worked for us for five years. We knew that um, perhaps it was not enough, you know, for her to return, but we didn't want to stop her because the son needed her. Pray for her and share Christ with her, and she accepted Christ. It was then, you know, uh, she left us. Few months later, she texts us to say that oh, not enough. Need to come back and work. But uh, we share her that we already got another domestic helper, you know, <laughs> so we can't have her. It was then um, she went to Taiwan and worked. During the December holiday, I was just sharing with uh, my wife, why don't we go Taiwan and visit her, and also for our holiday. And that's what we did, you know. The first picture was Winnie and myself, you know, went to Taiwan to visit her. One year later, my children said, we want to visit auntie also, you know. And then we went to Taiwan again, this time around, you know, with our children. Bank Singapore, you know, there was one, you know, we were just watching news and Taiwan had typhoon. My girl just closed her eyes. So I told her, for me, it's okay. No need to be scared. You know, it's news, right? No need to be scared. And she said, "No, I'm praying for Auntie. I'm praying for Auntie." It was then I realized that we have taught our children something that the Lord has laid upon our hearts, and that is that we are not better than our domestic helper. They are here to work for us, but that doesn't make us better. So we need to guard our heart from pride. And we have learned also like the importance to give. And you see the first uh, picture, you know, in what happens that we bought her something and she brought us something as well. Yeah. So let me leave lessons with you today. 
guard our hearts from pride. We're not better than the foreign workers or the domestic helpers. Rather, let's reach out to them with love. Also, we are not better than our friends, you know, just because um, we are better in our studies or sports or even our Bible knowledge. Let's recognize that at the end of the day, God knows everything we don't. It's by God's grace that we can be who we are today. So, watch out for pride. Second, Watch out for greed. How? By giving to others as the Lord leads us. You can give your time. You can give energy. You can give even whatever that God has given to you. For example, for us, it could be just to teach our foreign our domestic helper English. How about you? What is it that you can give? And don't hope, oh, this is mine, this is mine. No, God has given to us so that we can give. So what is it that God has given to you that He wants you to give? That will help us to guard ourselves from greed. So brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, whatever that we study in the Holy Scriptures, we must put it into practice. Then this faith at work will really help us to grow. Allow me to just close this time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can have together to just look into your word and to learn. Now even as um, your word go forth, we just pray the Lord that, that you will not return to your word, but accomplish whatever the Lord that you desire. God, our hearts from pride. And Lord, so that God, we will not place you know, our security, our significance in what we have. But Lord, that we will place our significance and security in you and you alone. And help us so that, Lord, um, that we will give as you lead us and direct us, Lord, even as we put our trust in you. Thank you, God. We give thanks to you and pray this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.